Hello and welcome to Access Chat. I'm delighted that we're joined today by one of our good friends, Diane Lightfoot, CEO of Business Disability Forum. Deborah's having a few problems with her Wi-Fi today, so if she does pop up, great, but uh, but that would explain her absence right now. So, uh, Diane, it's great to have you with us. Um, always love the work of the BDF, and uh, I was particularly uh, honored to be on a panel recently where you were talking about mental health and the impact of COVID and technology and the pandemic. And I thought, actually, this is a conversation we, we need to have with a, with a wider audience. So can you explain a little bit about what the discussions were and, 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 and what prompted you to, to start that conversation? Sure. Um, well, firstly, hello, and thank you very much for having me back. I think last time I was on Access Chat, it must have been the summer of 2018, because I remember it was absolutely boiling. It was with that, that huge heat wave. So um, lovely to be back. And yes, the, the, the conference that um, we were delighted to have you at, Neil, was on the 30th of March, and we called it Time to Reset. And it was about mental health and technology. And it came about really from from two angles and the first really was thinking about the pandemic and it being a digital pandemic and the reliance on tech workers in mm. actually transforming the way that we worked two years ago literally overnight and it was a couple of months ago maybe back in january when we were starting to plan this event that i learned of the really really awful horrifying um news that so many more tech workers had taken their own lives during the pandemic presumably though we won't know for sure as a result of the enormous pressure that they were under and i was reflecting then as a, as as i said at the event that Technology is one of those things that we totally rely on. And the 99% of the time when it works smoothly and beautifully, we don't even notice, let alone say thank you to the people that make it happen. But for the 1% when it doesn't, we risk jumping up and down and making a fuss. And actually, the tech workers are really, really trying to do their best. And I say this as a non-techie person, but with a lot of techie people in my friends and family and, of course, work. And so it made me think about mental health and support and that whole piece around psychological safety love it or hate it as a term and who is actually supporting tech workers and then more broadly just the impact of technology on our mental health and obviously this is a this is a tech channel access chat is about tech and there are loads of wonderful things that technology does not least um bringing bringing this uh, web chat to life um but also i was reflecting on some of the negatives and some of the downsides of that and looking at ourselves on screen all day and the effect that has on self-image and some of the stuff around social media and younger people and the rise in heavily doctored selfies. And I, I saw fairly recently the Dove campaign around reverse selfie, which is amazing, but also horrifying. Um, and then just speaking to colleagues about this always on culture, the fact that we can now cram so much more into our days. And some of that's positive, but the blurring of professional and home lives is is to such an extent that it's all you almost can't separate them anymore and that is not necessarily good for us so we were looking at kind of impact of burnout and where technology fits in and how to make sure or how we might make sure that technology is working for us rather than the other way around yeah excellent and and i think that you know we we've talked on access chat a number of times about how flexible working has been a you know, a long-term thing that the disability community has been asking for and that COVID and the, the transition to home working overnight suddenly made it clear that it wasn't impossible for businesses to deliver. But I don't think we've really talked about the sort of the downsides or also the fact that, that the, the cultural change has an impact on, on the community in particular in terms of, you know, we talk about spoon theory, for example, you know, uh, you know a lot of uh, 
the disabled community have energy conservation issues you know my, myself including you know we do talk about having a limited number of spoons or a limited amount of energy to do all the stuff we need to do and the, the expectation that you're going to be always on um i think again has profound implications for the the long-term health and even the short-term mental health of of the disability community as well so i think there's there's an awful lot to sort of unpack in 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 the culture there yes we want flexibility but if that flexibility just means you can be at home working all of your waking hours when you're struggling with your energy levels anyway yeah. are we really winning and it's not effective either i mean i, I love the spoons theory and kind of related to that i remember reading some I can't remember, some years ago that apparently we, we make some crazy number of decisions a day it the number seventy five thousand springs to mind but it might not be that but it's this huge huge number and it was basically making the point that we have finite capacity to make decisions so you know that thing when you in the old days get home from work and you can't decide what to have for dinner that's a real thing is you've run out of the ability to make decisions and if you are still working at the time when you've run out of the ability to make decisions, surely you're not going to be working productively or well or making good decisions. So it's it's not like it's it's good for the business either. But I think we're all caught in this cycle of of guilt, really, and and not productivity and not even present presenteeism, but feeling that we have to do with that little bit more and that little bit more. And of course, it becomes a self perpetuating thing that that bleeds into everything we do and is uh very infectious yeah uh, it, what was interesting for me was that the people that were on the panel were conscious and still conscious of the impacts and still exhibiting those we were all still exhibiting those bad behaviors ourselves oh totally um, totally so i I, w I went into the office I'm, I'm going to the office occasionally um mainly because i like it and i like seeing the few people that are there but also i find the days i go in are more relaxing because I've planned them that way because they, they can't be, it's hectic. And we spent the afternoon, the three hours, um, doing that conference, recording it, talking about exactly this. We finished at five and I was knackered. And about quarter past five, I came out of my office and I said to the people who were there, only two, I said, oh, I'm gonna go home, home now because I'm really knackered. And it was quarter past five. And they said, you don't have to you don't have to explain why you're leaving at quarter past five. And I thought, and I'm saying this after we've just spent three hours having that discussion. It's it's crazy. I, I know. Uh, I, and and, and um, my, my, my working day you know, goes from you know, before sun up to well after sundown. Um, and yes, there's some flex. Um, and sometimes you can go out in the middle of the day and you can deliver stuff asynchronously but the the expectation is is that you're always connected and i i, I and i do think that that has to stop um, and there has to be some kind of leadership uh, on this i think you know you're seeing it in in france with the right to de disconnect mm. um where you know, workers are allowed, you know, effectively can just go no, no, no. But but call. that but that permission to disconnect is is after five. Yes. You, you need to disconnect is during the working day after spending, I don't know, seven hours in meetings. That's when you need to disconnect. You need you need time to think, time to stop, yeah. time to read. You know. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. And and on top of that. Uh, I've seen, you know, uh, many organizations that, that acknowledge that that kind of a pandemic of timings of pandemic of meetings is taking place, and then okay, and then we have a mental health, a mental health app that is going to assist you. I don't think that is going to help. You know, after that, you are going to talk with the bot. So I don't think that is going to, you know, is that is not going to end well. No. And we I think, firstly, we have to give ourselves permission because nobody can do it for us. 
Um, and I, I, you know, like I've just said, I know I'm my own worst enemy. And I paid for it yesterday. So I speak about, I speak about having depression, um, mm -hmm. sort of fairly regularly, um, boringly often, you may say. And yesterday, actually, some of the content of Wednesday um, it was very, very powerful. And um, particularly that the last part we heard about this amazing um, suicide prevention tool that a, a woman called Alice Hendy has developed. It's called Ripple. And it's a disruptor. And it basically, if people are, people have got this downloaded into their browser and they are searching for ways to end their own life or self-harm, it disrupts that with positive messages. But so the content was really, really, really intense. And even the content that was talking about the more work-life balance stuff, it's really quite profound stuff. And yesterday I was I was really struggling. I was really struggling. And yet I felt guilty about taking any time to do that. And the only person that can give me that permission to take some time out is me, particularly at home, because no one else is there to see it. So I think I think we have to be brave and do it and then and then tell people that we've done it and that we need to do it mm. and make it okay. Otherwise, we just get faster and faster and faster, all trying to show up with our game faces and feeling like a little husk inside. Yeah, I, I think that I look at I look at a lot of things and that and that acceleration uh, and, and that acceleration of expectations, the communication acceleration is almost like you're expecting an answer before you sent it. Now mm. we can't get much faster um and, and yet you've got fragmentation as well you know, people are frazzled you know and neurodivergent people are extra frazzled if you like um but but everybody's frazzled so so i'm not going to claim a special flag flag but but i do think that that ability to step away is missing where uh, at the moment you know the 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 culture that has we've all contributed to creating is difficult to break out of that cycle um but it's not delivering good quality no you know i i think that that you know as you say we're pay, we're taking bad decisions and short term decisions and decisions whilst tired and isolated and and, and, and emotional, you know, emotion is not a bad thing for decision making, but essentially all of the decisions we're taking at the moment are all decisions taken under uh, like a, a sort of at least minimum low grade stress and probably quite a bit higher. Yeah. Um, and so what, do, what impact does that have on the things that we deliver, the products that we make, the policies and decisions that that you know, can affect our lives and the people's lives that we serve and that our organizations serve and would it not be better to actually step back and cogitate and and and, and then it's right you know actually you need to take time during the day because i quite often people laugh at me i'd have my lunch at 11 or 11 30. right and what, they go, but is that but but, I, I, but 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 that's basic. But no, but they're a surprise because uh, also I work with a lot of sort of Southern Europeans, and so okay, later, so that's breakfast, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and uh, uh, but but basically, I'm up. I'm up well before six. So and I'm quite often on calls from like seven. So by the time it gets to eleven o'clock, I've done half a working day. By eleven o'clock, you need a small sherry, probably. <laughs> <laughs> which probably goes quite nicely with with frazzles i do i do like frazzles although not though not being frazzled um yeah, yeah and I, I think what antonio was saying about the app and obviously yeah. that's something yet another thing you have to do and tune yeah. into and yet another bit of kit after you've done everything else you have to do in a day mm -hmm. and where some of this came from was I had uh, I, I was at a, a round table. They're all round tables, aren't they? When they're actually a load of square boxes on a screen at the moment, with one of our partners, and it was around mental health, and it was around mentally healthy workplaces and how you can have supportive conversations and how you can encourage employees to share how they're feeling and, and all, all really 
really good stuff and not just well-meaning but with a genuine desire to make things better and it was as the conversation was going on I was thinking yeah but if you have a supportive line manager that's great and it definitely makes things better but if your job is fundamentally too busy too full too much it's still too busy too full too much even if someone is nice to you about it that doesn't actually solve the problem it might make you feel a bit better than having someone shout at you but it's still too much and that's when i was then thinking about all of us collectively as a society needing to be mindful and needing to slow down because if if we all have expectations, like you say, that an email is going to be answered almost before we've sent it or that a product's going to be delivered same day or, or whatever it is, then we will never, ever break that cycle. And we've all got to be mindful about it. And I know I know that sounds a bit ambitious and possibly sort of hippie ish, but we have managed global movements before. I mean, you know, there were there were days not that long gone by when no one took their own bags to the supermarket. And now you almost sort of get publicly vilified if you don't don't you um but it's it's a total total change and I think as you say that thing about getting faster and faster and faster and faster it doesn't necessarily mean better but unless we make a conscious effort to slow it down it will just keep getting faster yeah so I, I one of the things I've been watching is the some of the companies um switching to four day weeks now, I mean, it doesn't deal with the, the speed of tech, but at least you've got some decompression time. Um, I suppose so, as long as you're not expected to do the same amount of work in four days as you would in five. Oh, well, that's, I mean, that, that, so, so, so there are um, two different ways of approaching this. One is compressed working week, which is essentially where you do, but you get more clear delineation between your personal time and your work time so so it's like like you were talking about sort of going to the office and shutting the door on it kind of thing um and the other is actually yes just expecting people to only work four days and taking the shorter time but recognizing that because people are more rested they're able to be more creative be more productive they've got you know they're, they're, you know, they're, they're in a more fit state to be able to produce good quality work and good, you know, make good decisions. It's, it's a nice idea. I think, I think, I think, <laughs> you, you, I think for that, you need to put a, K, a KPI on the number of meetings that you are allowed to have per week. You know, you need to limit the number of hours that you are able to be on meetings on on a, on a weekly basis uh, and and people might say oh you are going to work slower maybe you are not going to work slower but you, you need to deploy that somehow within organizations for everyone to to comply with that because i think the, where we are going even if we have a four day work week you are going to have you know four days of meetings so i don't think one thing is not going to help the other uh, is not going to help the other either so so yeah I, I i i i hear you says the man that has 60 meetings a week i know i know um <laughs> right and uh, and i'm aware right that, that i then spend my evenings and my early mornings trying to do the stuff that i've agreed to in those meetings to and and trying to eke out that brain space right because when you're in the meetings, all you're doing is taking those bad, is making snap decisions or, or, or sending distracted messages to people um, whilst pretending to concentrate or having one ear. Uh, and yet, there doesn't seem to be a very well-adopted or good way of managing stuff outside of meetings now a few few organizations have done it but they tend to be smaller ones and there aren't many really really large organizations that have managed to, to sort of do a synchronous communication and, and and really reduce the meetings other than by replacing them with something that is eating up as much time. Because I think, you know, the, we've, we've, we in Natos have 
tried various things over the years. Like we, in 2011, we were the zero email company. Wow. Yeah, we, we, did, we declared that email was, you know, eating up everybody's time. It was really bad for productivity. So we were going to um, stop doing email and that we were going to use online collaboration platforms like we're using with Teams and Yammer and all of that 10 years ago. The trouble is now we've got, <laughs> what's happened is we've got email, we've got WhatsApp, we've got Teams, we've got Yammer, we've got, so, so it, it's just, it, rather than, than solving the problem, we just added but, to but that. Neil, but uh, as you know, all yeah. the mainstream collaboration tools that we have today are basically replacing a kind of email on steroids. Yes. You know, Teams or Slack basically almost create that immediacy that is even stronger than email. Yes. So that doesn't help. And those tools, they were, they were mainly uh, developed for developers, yes. not for everyone else. No. So maybe we need to step back and make decisions about what are the resources and the tools that you need to collaborate uh, on a daily basis. And even on, on you were mentioning the, 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 the subject of meetings and how difficult it is to end all that narrative. But if organizations are concerned with mental health, employee well-being, they are spending money someplace else, okay? To, just to fix all these issues. Why not fixing the problems at the source, you know? Yeah, I agree. I think it's really it's 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 really tricky because I'm torn on this. We have I remember when when ten plus years ago when we when we started the accessibility team, we were all co located. So we didn't need to arrange meetings with each other because you know the chat the chatter would happen whilst we were surrounded by each other and we would, you know, break bread together, maybe have a drink. Um, no. and, and, and yeah, shocking, huh? Um, and, and yeah, the intensity wasn't as great. We still got stuff done. And then mm. as we grew what we were doing, we started doing stuff in different teams. And I think the challenge now is that if we have, if we go to remote working, even though you may have some teams in the office, everybody's going to essentially be remote working because you've got to connect. So the hybrid working thing means that you're still all going to have to be on calls or in meetings because you've got to bring those people together to have those communications or some way or be spending time in these tools which are designed for small teams, as, as Antonio was saying. You mm. know, developers tend to work in like small groups and they work really well in small groups. So I know when I'm on a particular topic and you're in one of these tools, it can work nicely. But when you're in an organization with like hundreds of thousands of employees, suddenly you've got, I'm in, I don't know, 300 different teams. And <laughs> each of those might have like people pinging left, right and center. How do you, the, the, how do you work out the, the signal from the noise becomes really, really difficult. And, and we know that even the, the, the tech companies have worked out that this is a problem because if you go to, you know, Outlook Online, it gives you filtered inbox. The problem is the AI is not good enough because it filters out lots of the important stuff and then you don't see it. Yeah. So, you, so, so I, I think there's a mixture of humans taking back control uh, and, and that's really difficult because the, the notification culture what you what you were referring to as the pandemic um, really does, you know, we're wi we're hardwired to respond to this stuff and respond to the dopamine hits. Yeah, I miss. I know this makes me sound like a dinosaur. I am a dinosaur. I miss a good sidle. You know, being in the office and where you can just go up to someone and just say, "Well, have you got a minute? And what do you think about this?" And it might take five minutes, probably tops. Yes. And yet you either wouldn't organise a meeting to say that, or if you did organise a meeting, you'd probably feel it was a bit rude to make it anything less than half an hour. And it's just not its not the same. Those little sort of chance things where you, as you were saying, Neil, when you work in that immersive way with a, a team of developers, 
that you can then just share stuff rather than it all having to be scheduled to the nth degree and longer than it needs to be because um time always uh, meetings always expand to fill the time available don't they yes i mean i think I, I i was quite a big fan of management by walking about yes yes and um that's not possible anymore you can't do you can't do that virtual well maybe you know maybe we'll we'll turn up in the metaverse so we'll we'll be virtually walking about it with our headsets on from our desks at home sidling up to people <laughs> sounds quite creepy yes it does. maybe it's maybe it'll be good but uh, yeah and those those human interactions and it's, it's funny as well um at, at the event there was a lot of discussion about time spent in meetings versus time spent working and i thought where did we get to a point where meetings are not seen as being actually work and and therefore by sort of not useful if you see what i mean it's like when people say oh, i spend all my time managing rather than working and i think yeah but being a manager particularly if you're doing it well is work it is it's part of your role you know so if if a meeting is productive and useful and is of the right length then it should be considered work in a positive way does that make any sense at all or is this just <laughs> it does I, I think the when i first transitioned to being a manager i i really struggled with the idea that i wasn't doing and that I, I, you know my role was to get other people to do stuff successfully um um and that it is a difficult transition for people to make um I think also the fact that we now we're aware of the mental health issues that people are facing. So what we're then doing is booking in meetings to check in with people. And we do need to do that pastoral care. But then we've, you know, we've got we've got two types of meetings that are happening. We've got the the meetings about meetings because you're trying to progress stuff, the check in type meetings and the, you know, all of those kind of trying to get some progress done, right, which takes longer when you're not when you're not sort of co-located right um it can work and we've, we've seen that it's worked and we've proved that it that it you know it's still possible to do business and all of that but it there is a time cost and then there's all of the additional time cost of those booked up bits where you have these you know missing those micro interactions the sort of how yeah. are you good morning you know grabbing a coffee you know that and and i think that's another reason why people are feeling exhausted because then they're going well actually when am i going to do the stuff that came out of that first set of meetings of progressing and that's how we end up working these really ridiculous hours yeah. and that those things that i'm really stressed about when i'm going to do them and they feel like they're hanging over me yes and actually when i do them probably don't take as long as i fear they will but the actual specter of them looms very large yes yeah absolutely so i mean this is why i was i tried to i've stopped with the to-do lists and and started trying to diarize stuff i mean the other challenge is i i spent the last seven years my diary has been completely open so anyone could view my diary right and they could see what i was doing and i believed in doing that because well, it was, it was partly a matter of principle, you know, of tr transparency, but I've turned it off in the last couple of weeks because people were then deciding that things that I got in there weren't important enough. Oh, right. For them not to For ride them it. Not to override it and put stuff in. Oh, my goodness. I think so. Yeah. So that lack of transparency now just shows the block of being busy. You talked about other people taking over your diaries and many years ago, I mean, like probably 15 years ago, I worked with a consultant who used to say diaries are a repository of other people's priorities, mm -hmm. which I always really liked. Yeah, absolutely. That's such a great line. It's good, isn't it? I, I always see, I've remembered it. I've remembered it for 15 years. I trot it yeah. out every now and again, and I always I always really like it. But um, I also like that thing that I think it was um, Sarah from Nat West said about it's okay not to be available all of the time. Yes. And, and it is okay, because actually how many things come to us in our day that are genuinely, if you're not there that split second, 
the world's going to fall apart. Not yeah. very many. Shouldn't yeah. admit this, really, should we? Because it will take away our aura of um, magnificence and omni omnipotence. But unfortunately, <laughs> it's true. Yes, absolutely. I've got, uh, and you, 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 you need to, to to disconnect to think about you know, to have ideas. You know, when you are on that pressure of oh, I need to go to my next meeting, I need to do this PowerPoint, uh, I need to be connected, you're not going to be able to let your mind wander. And, and it's important that you let yourself wander uh, uh, in, into other things. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're not going to be productive or you're not going to be innovative. And I think it's very important to, to have that disconnect, uh, you know, uh, to, to have that time just for yourself, to, to let yourself flow in a in a you know in a very personal way everyone is different so that that time uh, of disconnecting is particularly precious for us yeah 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 i i i would agree I, I, it feels modern work feels very much like you've you're in a sealed room with a kettle and and my brain is a bit like oh sorry my brain on modern work is like a sealed room with a kettle and at the beginning of the day it's fine la, 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 la. but as you go throughout the day the steam from the kettle builds up and you get this kind of brain fog and and it's only really by stepping away and doing something like a like hard exercise just clears your brain uh, for you to be creative again because it, it really does feel like you you're you're full. Your head is so full of all of these things that you become, as you you were saying earlier, incapable of making a decision. It sort of paralyzes you because you can't. You really, you know, your brain is unable to process that stuff. And particularly, you know, neurodivergent brains where we have less neurons connected anyway. Um, so, so I do think that it's particularly important for us to, to step away. And, and, and at that point, we step away from the camera because we've reached the end of our time. Um, so I need to thank our friends, my clear tech, for keeping us captioned. Thank you, Diane, for being our guest. I'm really looking forward to you joining us on Twitter and for us yeah. continuing this conversation. That's flown by. Thank you so much, Neil. And thank you, Antonio. It's, it's lovely to lovely to chat with you both. Thank you.